So yeah, let's start. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Kostas from Rudderstack, together with some, as I said in the introduction, like some other people from our team. Super excited to be with you today. Um, let me tell you a few things about Rudderstack before we move on and uh, share more information about how we uh, use uh, Kubernetes in our stack. So uh, Rudderstack is an open source um, event streaming, capturing and processing infrastructure. Um, you can think of it as an open source alternative to segments for the people of you that like they know what segment is and probably you do. Uh, but actually, we are much more than that. So instead of like just capturing events and uh, routing these events to different applications, uh, we're actually building a whole infrastructure where like uh, events can be uh, captured and uh, routed from different sources, both on the applications and uh, mobile devices and like the, the, the common sources that you see on uh, segment, but also like internally. And um, uh, at the same time, we integrate heavily with uh, the rest of the, the data stack that the company might have, like data warehouses, data lakes. So we focus more on that, on how we can uh, enrich and enhance, let's say, the existing data infrastructure of a company with uh, capturing event streams, uh, processing event streams, and activating these event streams. Um, that's on a very high level what we are doing. So as you can understand, like a uh, big part of uh, our uh, product and project is uh, moving a lot of data around and uh, having like very strict guarantees about like the quality, um, things like delivery semantics and anything that has to do with a distributed um, data infrastructure uh, project. Um, can you mo move to the next slide, please? Mm -hmm. So some things that like differentiate Rudderstack in terms of the other like projects that you can find out there. First of all, we're an open source software. Uh, everything that we build, um, it's uh, the, also like um, delivered as open source. You can find us on GitHub. All the code is there for you to review. Um, the reason that we do that, I mean, apart uh, from being very engineering focused, we believe that like uh, whatever, uh, if we want to succeed in this space, we have to build like products for engineers. Uh, another reason is that like we are very privacy and security concerns. Um, so data is a big thing. Everyone needs to work with data, but we have to do it uh, while we are being sensitive on how we are handling and uh, how we uh, move this data around. And being open source gives the opportunity to the community out there to see exactly what is happening, like the, what the code is, what uh, can be done, and have much more transparency and also many more uh, choices in terms of like where the software can run and where it's hosted. Uh, we're data warehouse native. Um, as I said in the introduction, um, we focus a lot on uh, enhancing the already existing infra data infrastructure that um, an organization uh, has. So we work very well with um, uh, data warehouses, things like um, data processing platforms, other data pl uh, process platforms like um, Apache Beam, Beam etc. Uh, and we try to build a product that is going to be very um, easy and fun to work with, uh, monitor it, and in general, like offer all um, the infrastructure, let's say, and all the tools that uh, a data engineering team and an operations team need in order to make sure that everything works uh, properly. A uh, big part of this is also like incorporating Kubernetes and as you will see uh, later, um, of other open source tools like uh, Grafana and some other uh, monitoring uh, applications that we integrate uh, to the project. Um, can we move forward, please? So uh, a few things about the architecture, uh, which is important to keep in mind um, because it will make things like easier to understand in terms of like how we deploy it. So Rudderstack is actually, uh, the architecture is like split in two. We have the control plane, which is like um, the user interface and everything that um, interacts uh, with the user in, uh, and allows him like to create pipelines and uh, connect sources um, to destinations, like for example, connecting um, uh, your mobile uh, app application and making sure that all the data are routed to uh, Google Analytics, for example. And then we have the data plane, which is the actual core of the, of the project where 
everything that has to do with like collecting uh, and um, process processing and uh, delivering data happens. The data plane, which is written in Go, uh, it's what's like it's also the main part that it's um, uh, deployed on uh, Kubernetes. You can also deploy the control plane, but like the main focus and what we are going to see today is about the data plane, which is the most important part. Now, the data plane uh, is responsible for communicating with all the sources that they generate data. Uh, of course, there is some kind of integration that needs to happen from that side. Like on iOS, we have like SDKs that you can use, um, JavaScript SDKs, etc. Data is pushed into the data plane. Then we have like um, a framework to apply transformations of the data. And from there, the um, transformed data can uh, flow into your, uh, the rest of your data infrastructure, any applications or BI tools that you might have. And of course, like cloud application destinations, like um, the typical tools that probably your like marketing teams might want to uh, enrich with data in order to, uh, to utilize. Uh, next slide, please. So why we uh, decided to use uh, Kubernetes? Actually, Kubernetes helps us realize some important aspects of our technical vision. I touched some of these things like on the previous uh, uh, slides. So one thing is privacy. Uh, at the same time, it's like deployment flexibility. For example, it's quite important for us to give um, the ability to uh, you out there to deploy um, um rather stack in any way that you want if that's on-prem you can do it uh if you prefer like to use a SaaS solution there is a SaaS solution and then we can also like um uh, deploy uh, rather stack on a certain vpc environment so in order to um to do that like to cover all these different use deployment use cases um kubernetes is like extremely helpful um we want to have deployment elasticity so customer infrastructure varies, and we can address that with uh, Kubernetes. And we also want to have multi-cloud support, uh, which again, uh, Kubernetes is very helpful, helpful because it's a first class citizen in all major cloud infrastructure providers. Um, and it gives us also the opportunity to package and deploy a very complex architecture um, in a very specific and predictable uh, way. Next slide, please. Another great thing around Kubernetes that we have um, incorporated a lot like in building our project is an, uh, that there is an amazing open source uh, software ecosystem around it. Some of the things that we use, um, and it's not limited only to this list, it's like the Cluster Autoscaler, uh, FluentD for uh, log processing, external DNS to manage DNS entries for the publicly exposed services in Cluster, and of course, Rutherstack. I mean, we're using Rutherstack internally for any kind of uh, needs that we have in terms of like collecting and uh, managing data. And of course, again, uh, we do that by deploying it on our um, Kubernetes infrastructure. Next slide, please. So I'll go through uh, a quick step-by-step, uh, -step, let's say, um, how to of how we um, you can deploy and monitor other stack. I think that deployment and monitoring is that what is more important for people who are in operations, either SREs or DevOps. So that's what we are going to cover here. Of course, we are more than happy to answer any questions that you might have uh, after that. I was thinking about how to do that. Uh, initially, we were thinking to actually do an a demo where I would set it up uh, live, but to be honest, I don't think that makes so much sense in terms of also interacting. So instead of that, we are going to go through each step and I'll tell you like um, what uh, has to be done in each step and we take it from there. And if you have questions, like we can uh, discuss further, but in any case, as you will see, I mean, deploying rather stuck at this point on like on a Kubernetes uh, cluster, it's like extremely, extremely easy. So let's move to the next slide, please. Uh, prerequisites, like what is needed for the deployment. Uh, you need to have some pretty standard things. Uh, kubectl installed and connected to your Kubernetes cluster. I guess if you have a Kubernetes cluster there, you already have that. And um, you also need to have Helm installed, like everything, that, uh, the, the way that we maintain um, uh, how the uh, runners that can be deployed is through Helm. And uh, these are like the two main things that are the prerequisites uh, from the Kubernetes side uh, um, things uh, in order like to move forward and uh, deploy uh, Rutherstack. And another thing that you need 
uh, it's to get a workspace token from the dashboard of uh, Rutherstack. Um, there's a link here. I mean, it's, you go uh, sign up and you get like the key and you can use that to um, connect actually uh, the data plane to the hosted version of the uh, control plane. Um, you set up your account, copy your work, uh, workspace token from the top of the homepage, and that's all the pr uh, prerequisites that are necessary for this process. Next slide, please. So, yeah, after that, I mean, after you have the workspace token, uh, it's just a simple like install command using help. Um, you need to define the release that uh, the release name. Uh, this is the deployment for the specific release. Um, and the deployment will happen on your default Kubernetes cluster uh, configured with kubectl. Now, um, as you can see, it's like all it takes just one command uh, to do it. Then you can use Helm upgrade and Helm uninstall. Helm upgrade, um, it can uh, allows you like to upgrade the, um, the version of Rutherstack that you run there and also like reconfigure any things that you might have after updating configuration files. Um, and Helm uninstall, of course, like, can, uh, allows you like to undeploy the um, rather stack from uh, from your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, there is a number of configuration parameters. Like Somadev, can you click on the link there so I think we can go through like pretty quickly on the configuration parameters? Okay, thank you. So there is like a small set of um, uh, parameters that uh, configure and define like um, your deployment. Uh, there is of course like the workspace token, um, the image repository that is used um, for, to fetch like the images uh, for a rather stack. The version, this is quite important. That's also what you should use in order like to uh, upgrade if you want or downgrade or in general like uh, version control, like the rather stack uh, installation that you have. Um, there is like uh, things like pull policy, image repository. Um, by default, there is a, an, an ingress is created. Um, so you have like the network exposed to the outside. Um, so as you can see, I mean, the parameters are like pretty basic. You have all the important things, but they are it's, like pretty straightforward. Uh, like how you can define and how you can update like configurations uh, for other stack. Uh, can we go back to the presentation, please? Thank you. And next slide. So uh, when you make a deployment, what's on your cluster? You have um, a pod, which is the rather stack um, backend data plane, actually. Uh, and together a telegraph sidecar, this is uh, for collecting metrics and making sure that these metrics are um, sent to the right places. Um, we uh, incorporate Postgres. Uh, we use that to do things like uh, we create actually, and that's a pretty interesting topic to discuss, uh, but we had the need to, to create uh, queues to ensure like the quality of the data and making sure that everything is delivered. So there is a quite sophisticated queuing system that is developed on top of uh, Postgres to do that. This is uh, an important part of our product. So that's actually the only dependency that we have external um, dependency that we have in terms of software. And um, we are also, uh, there is a pod for the transformer. The transformer is actually um, responsible for making any transformations and also delivering the data to the different data destinations like uh, ranging from your data warehouse um, to your to any applications that you would like the data to be delivered to. Uh, so these are like the pods that you should see on your um, cluster uh, after you have um, deployed um, rather stack. Can we move forward, please? So an another important uh, thing when it comes to like deploying something like rather stack on um, uh, Kubernetes is monitoring, right? I mean, we are talking about an infrastructure, a data infrastructure that has to uh, interact with many different parts, both of your infrastructure, the rest of your infrastructure, but also uh, other services that might live outside uh, your own uh, um, cloud environment. 
So it's quite important to know like what is happening and most importantly, what's going wrong. So that's why we paid a lot of attention on making sure that we all the tools that might be needed for someone to monitor the health um, of a rather uh, cluster uh, are there. So how things work is that um, we are using StatsD, the StatsD protocol, where uh, many measurements are um, collected and pushed uh through telegraph and from there to influx to influx db and then we have like two main components one is a capacitor which is used mainly to create notifications uh when certain criteria are met so we can use for example uh, pager duty for alerting or send messages to slack and then of course we have grafana where we have dashboards there where you can see exactly what is happening um, and uh, visualize all the different metrics that can come from your uh, data plane. Um, next slide, please. So yeah, I can also show you an example of a Grafana board. Uh, so this is a pretty typical out of the box uh, Grafana uh, dashboard that is created from the stats that are collected from the rather stack um, deployment. Um, it's quite rich, as you can see. I mean, there are pretty low level stuff that are uh, tracked like latency. Uh, we also track things like uh, the time that it takes to load the data on your data warehouse, uh, errors, like anything that uh, uh, might be needed in order like, to have a good understanding of the health of your cluster. And of course, I mean, being an open source project and at the same time, like uh, using these uh, specific technologies like Grafana, in InfluxDB, uh, there's a lot of space uh, for uh, to customize um, these uh, tools based on your uh, specific needs. Uh, let's go back, please. Next slide. So yeah, that's like a very quick uh, introduction. As you can see, uh, setting up uh, on an already existing Kubernetes cluster, uh, rather stack is pretty straightforward. Um, Helm also helps a lot on that. Like it's very easy to um, using like uh, Helm to do that. And um, we pay a lot of attention to um, have all the tools in place so you can monitor and know exactly what is happening on your rather stack um, deployment. And there's a lot of um, um, tools available to support and maintain your cluster there. So uh, I'm pretty sure that you might have like questions. So please feel free. I mean, all the appropriate people are here to answer them. So. With dashboard, uh, the Grafana one or the dashboard of uh, Rutherstack? Ah, yeah, sure, of course. Uh, Somerdiv, can you open it, please? Yeah. So, yeah, this is like the uh, the user interface. Uh, actually, this is the, the, the control plane, as I told earlier. Um, the main actions that you can do here is, uh, from one side, you can create sources. Um, these sources might be things like, for example, loading, um, like collecting data from um, iOS devices, your application, your server code, that like a server application that you might run somewhere using JavaScript. And um, actually there are also like, it's very customizable. There are, I mean, these are the things that are coming out of the box and they are offered like and maintained by us. But um, that's the beauty also of like having something open source. Like there are many things that you can do on your own. And we are also doing it internally. Like for example, recently we wanted to pull out some data from GitHub uh, and we did that using Rutherstack, right? So we just created the Lambda function that would pull the data, a very small Lambda function um, that can pull data from uh, um, GitHub, uh, push the data onto the data, the data plane and from the, the data plane then could like route this data on our data warehouse uh, through S3 and then to um, um, the data warehouse itself. Um, so yeah, another interesting thing that we can see here are the transformations. 
So the transformations are actually pieces like scripts that are written in JavaScript um, that you can use like to manipulate the data uh, that are flowing through RaderStack. What is interesting here is that like this uh, can be very helpful uh, when you are dealing with data that might have like issues. For example, let's say that um, something changes on the data model and something breaks, like you can create a script to fix that. Uh, other use cases are like try to mask or filter data out. That's pretty important. That's pretty common also. We have a repository where we keep templates um, for common uh, functions that can be deployed. So if you go to our GitHub uh, account, you, you you can find there also like quite a few uh, different uh, functions that you can use almost out of the box uh, working with your data. And of course, we are open like suggestions if there are things like uh, you can think of, uh, feel free like to contribute um, to the, the repository of templates. Um, and it's quite powerful, to be honest. Like we see from our users that um, there are like uh, pretty neat things that can be done with transformations. And it's a very big like difference um, compared to other products like Segment, for example. Uh, yeah, I'll quickly just add to that. I mean, let me go back to this. Where is that? I've got a box. Yeah, I mean, and other things we have on the dashboard is like we can like go through the, the live events tab is something which is pretty useful. You can like look at the live events which are flowing through it. So this is uh, like so you can. So I mean, every time an event is fired, we can see uh, both on the source as well as in the destinations. You can go to the destination and uh, look at the live events flowing through the destinations uh, as they make it to the destination. One other thing we also have is this, and the, the reason I'm refreshing this page is like, uh, like this is tracking our own website activity. So anything that happens uh, on our website is being tracked through Radar and sent to Google Analytics. So you see this whole thing as I refresh the page, this thing was sent to Google Analytics uh, uh, and so on. And as Costas already talked about transformations, which through which you can modify the event as it's flowing through Radar. Mm -hmm. uh, one. Uh, yeah, so please feel free. One last thing is this auto track SDK through which if you don't want to instrument your code, you can just embed our SDK and this will automatically track all clicks, all uh, page views that happens on their website. And that in combination of uh, transformation is pretty powerful because you can track all those raw DOM level events that this button was clicked uh, and then you can dump it into S3. At the same time, if you want to send it to some destination, like let's say if some button was clicked, you want to send uh, if some form was filled, we want to send it to MailChimp. That way you can like put a transformation saying that this is the DOM event, but you can map it to more logical events saying this button click means request a demo. So that, that is again done through transformation. So, yeah, I mean, like we on our, on our website, we have like a ton of destinations set up from many different sources, like uh, from GitHub Lambda, as you're saying, like there is a Lambda which is pulling metrics from GitHub and dumping into our Snowflake instance. And same for website and like uh, our app, and we have some telemetry data outs. Okay, you mentioned that there are some differences between um, rudder and, and segment IO. So you have transformation. Do you have other features that a segment type doesn't have? Yeah, one of the main uh, like differentiation that you can see between uh, segment and us is that uh, how well uh, we integrate with uh, the rest of the data infrastructure. So as we said, we are data warehouse native. That means that like all the different uh, tools that you can find out there from like data warehouses, data lakes, data processing uh, frameworks, it's very easy um, to connect with and uh, integrate the two tools together. Uh, we pay a lot of like uh, attention to that. For us, um, we really believe that like, uh, I mean, any kind of like solution in the data space, let's say, it has to be part of an overall stack that the company or the organization has. And that's what we're, we're trying to do. So that's one thing that's quite important. Like our uh, integration with these technologies are like uh, much more advanced and better than what you can find with uh, Segment. Another thing that I think it's quite interesting um, is how it like, first of all, how you can deploy and how you can own um, the infrastructure for other stack. 
I mean, Segment is a purely SaaS solution. In our case, um, there are many different options uh, on how you can deploy and maintain the infrastructure using RudderStack from putting it on a VPC, on-prem, or even using like a SaaS offer. Um, another quite important thing, and this also relates with Kubernetes, is that um, actually well, we are not a multi-tenant solution, right? Like whenever someone, even in our SaaS um, solution, if someone uses uh, SaaS RudderStack, um, whatever runs there, it's like completely all the resources are completely dedicated um, to the user. And that's why we are also using uh, Kubernetes. It's easy for us whenever someone signs up on, I, on our uh, SaaS uh, solution to spin up and create like an instance for them where like um, data are much more secure and we make sure that like the whole infrastructure is dedicated to the, to the customer. That's another important uh, aspect. And uh, finally, you can also see like um, when we went through what kind of monitoring tools we are using, uh, we're exposing a lot of um, control over the infrastructure to our users. That's why we are also like uh, so happy that we can use all these open source projects uh, because like we can expose all whatever is happening on the infrastructure and the user ha might, can have like a much more uh, understanding and control of what is happening uh, with their rather stack instance. Um, and that's the same when you um, deploy it on your own premises or you are, we are running for you, like the same tools you, you will have access like Grafana, etc. So you will have a much, let's say, better control over your infrastructure and what is happening there. Okay. Uh, someone is asking, uh, is there a difference between the open source version and the uh, SaaS in the features? Um, some of the you would like to yeah. say something about that? I can take that. So uh, the the primary difference is the uh, the multi node support. So uh, that is only in the actually what we say is like the enterprise plan. So if you want to run a single node instance of Rudder, uh, that's open source. Uh, the enterprise version uh, doesn't uh, has multi node support. So like the trivial way to do multi node is like you can spin up two instances of Rudder and route traffic to uh, put an ELB in front and just randomly route traffic to each one of them. That works well if there is no dependency on the downstream. So for some destinations, what you want to do is that you have to preserve event ordering. So for a given end user, let's say somebody, you're tracking events from your app. And for a mobile app user, you don't want to send events out of order, right? I mean, the add to cart event cannot go before product purchase event, right? Mm -hmm. Like it cannot go after. So whenever that event ordering matters, that's when you need to use our multi-node solution. Like that, that kind of has some stickiness around uh, users assigned to nodes. It, it takes care of that. But if, if, if even ordering doesn't matter, so let's let's if you're just dumping into S3 or sending it to Amplitude, which takes into account the timestamp, then uh, then you don't need a multi-node solution. So that is one of the key differences. The other difference is like the on the control plane itself. The demo that I showed is of the hosted version of the control plane. Uh, like this hosted version has some features like uh, it's still free, but it's not open source. So some of the features like live debugging and so on, we haven't open sourced yet. We have an open source control plane, uh, which doesn't have uh, the, the live debugging and, and the transformation features. So you're saying you, you haven't open source yet? Does this mean you will open source in the future or you're not sure? Right? Uh, not yet sure yet about like that kind of depends on uh, like at least we, that's our monetization vector right now that if you want like debugging and so on, you use the hosted version, uh, but uh, like, yeah, uh, that's to be decided. But like we have a open source version of the control plane also without the live debugging features. Okay. Um, um, but the data plane, the integrations, everything are all open source. Yeah. Okay. Someone is asking is if it, uh, it can be run on Heroku easily with a Docker image, for example. Yeah, uh, actually, somebody asked us on, on the Discord. I mean, we have never done it, but it sh yeah, it should just work. There's a Docker image. Yeah. What, what database does it use? So we use Postgres internally, uh, but we, we kind of use it, as Costas was saying, uh, for a very specific uh, way. I mean, like we kind of built our own streaming abstraction on top of Postgres. So uh, uh, yeah, so we, we need Postgres, and it's kind of like uh, our uh, Docker script, they, they, they spin up a Postgres image too. Uh, but on Heroku, maybe we can use the hosted Postgres offering. 
Okay. And so right now it's not possible to, someone's asking, it's not possible to run custom transformer on a local installation? Or is it? Uh, like you have to use the hosted control plane. Okay. To do transformation, yeah. So, because this one is, isn't open source, you said, right? This is not open source. The complete, yeah. Okay. But yeah. yeah, so but yeah, that, that's something like so. The, like uh, it's slightly. I mean, we're kind of figuring out how to simplify this. But like we have this data plane control plane. So the data plane is completely open source, as I mentioned. The control plane we have two versions. One is the hosted version, uh, which is still free, but it's not open source. And then there is an open source control plane version, which you can run anywhere, uh, but that doesn't have the live events and the transformation. Okay. And how how has it been received so far by the community and? and clients how, uh, is it uh is it yeah we have prom promising yeah we have like uh, both uh, like a lot of open source users like like for example nana they are the largest e-commerce in in saudi arabia they are using the open source version themselves like a couple of other smaller startups in europe using the open source version uh, europe north america and we also have like uh, paid uh, customers so and uh, customers, I, I would say, like, are mostly paying for the SaaS hosted offering. So, if you don't want to manage the data infrastructure yourself, you pay us; we'll manage it for you. Or you, uh, if you have the team, you can just run it. So, we have like good uh, interest. Uh, I mean, uh, these are early days, uh, nine, ten months, but yeah, so far we have uh, good adoption on the open source community. Yeah, but would love to get your feedback. We have a Discord channel, so please hop on and like give us feedback on what differently we could do. Yeah, please uh, join our Discord channel. Uh, we are very happy to engage with people there. Uh, and also, yeah, visit our like GitHub repository and any issues, uh, comments, whatever, are more, more than welcome to uh, hear from you. OK. Um, So you, yeah, someone is asking you only have two plane available, team and enterprise, or do you have? Yeah, on on the commercial side, yeah, there is open source also, uh, which is not a paid plan, but yeah, on the on the paid side, there is a team plan where we host it, uh, uh, we host the data plane, and it's kind of think of it as a SaaS offering, and we have the enterprise plan where we can uh, like uh, that has a lot more flexibility. Like so if if you want us to support rather in in your vpc or even on prem that's all in the enterprise plan and the enterprise plan is is also available on the cloud hosting yeah but i think the key difference in enterprise i mean people choose enterprise plan only when they want to run it inside their vpc okay they want to support us i mean for the cloud hosting they might as well go with the team support same okay because if i if i want for example the event replay on the cloud hosting that's not that's true. Like so, with the uh, the event replays uh, part of the enterprise plan. So that's one feature, but I I don't think I mean anyone has chosen us uh, for the event replay uh, to the on the enterprise. It's mostly people who want on prem, and they go with enterprise plan. Okay, makes sense. Uh, well, it looks like we don't have any other question. That's, uh, is there anything else you would like to add before we leave? Uh, um not really i mean um, mainly we are open to any kind of feedback feedback and we would like to engage with you so again feel free like to find us on discord and also like go to our github page and uh, uh, create issues i mean we're happy to see issues created there and take care of uh, things there like give it a try it's very easy like to set it up and run and see like how it works and yeah it's still early time for us so i mean we really want uh, to hear from you and uh, get as much feedback as possible okay uh, all right thanks everyone and uh, thanks for watching and hope to see you soon thank you so much bye bye, bye.